Hi Jason Tako, I hope you're all doing well. I want to give a special thanks to all you who subscribe to my channel. If you haven't yet subscribed, I encourage you to do so. It's completely free. You won't miss any upcoming painting demonstrations and it really helps me to continue making these videos. Today I'm going to be working on a 16 by 20 inch oil painting of a Native American on horseback. This painting is based on a charcoal drawing that I had done, which I had posted in an earlier demonstration. If you'd like to watch that demonstration, just click on the link above and that will take you to that video. I'm going to be doing this painting on Claussen's Oil Prime Linen. If you've never tried Oil Prime Linen, I highly encourage you to do so, provided you're an oil painter. It's wonderful to paint on, especially if you're used to acrylic prime or universal prime linen. Oil prime linen is less absorbent, so you can move the paint around a little more freely. It doesn't suck the paint in right away like you get with uh, the cheaper universal primed uh, canvas that you can buy, say, at Michaels or at AC Moore. I use this linen for all of my paintings. It's, like I said, it's top quality, and I've used it for many years now. It is more expensive than what you're going to pay for the cheaper stuff, but for me, I remember when I started using oil prime linen versus the cheap acrylic primed, it was a night and day difference for my paintings. And I'm sure you'll probably experience the same thing. If you'd like to read a little more about the linen that I use, just go to my blog, mysketchjournal.com. There's a link below. And I have a resources page where I talk about all the materials I use. And if you're interested, you can click on the link and that will take you to where it is available to purchase. So before I begin painting, I just want to briefly talk about the preliminary process for getting the drawing onto the canvas. If you saw one of my previous videos, you will see how I was able to um, print out the uh, enlargement of my sketch and how I applied charcoal to the back of that printout and then trace that onto the canvas. I took basically the same approach this time, but it was slightly different. Um, this right here is a printout of, let's hold on a second here, of my charcoal drawing. This is the actual charcoal drawing here, and hopefully you can see that well. And I scanned that in Photoshop, I blew it up, I printed it out, in two eight and a half by 11 inch sheets of paper because as I said before my printer doesn't go any bigger uh, sometimes what I will do great tip is um, if I want to go really big I will take an outline drawing not a shaded drawing like this but just the outline and I will actually send that to Staples they have a blueprint printing service where you can get a 24 by 36 actually no a 36 by 48 inch um, printout of an outline for under 10 bucks, provided you go pick it up. Um, these days you might have to have it shipped to you with COVID-19. But I didn't need to do that here because I wasn't going that big. So I just uh, printed this out in two sections. You can see I taped it together and I laid it onto the uh, canvas and I used a carbon transfer paper. I didn't bother doing the charcoal on the back this time. I was just being lazy today and because it's only 18 by 20, I figured, heck, I'll just do the carbon transfer paper instead. It was pointed out to me by um, somebody who knows a lot about horses, and I, I found that when you're painting horses and historical artwork, you, you, a lot of people will offer their opinions and advice. Some are right, some are wrong, I found out. I do have a couple experts that I consult with that are pretty definitive in their authority on the subject matter. But um, it was pointed out to me by somebody that the rider was too far up, um, that there's a bone here that would have been hitting him where it could really hurt. And um, so when I looked at the reference photo, I saw that the guy was actually riding that far up. Um, and I think it might have been because he's bareback. I don't know. But if you're a horse expert, you know, unless you really know for sure, uh, please just refrain from commenting because, I, like I said, I just get so many people that comment on these things and I found out that some are wrong and I have to go do all this research and it ends up being kind of a time waster for me. But anyway... I, I took this guy's advice because he seemed to really know what he was talking about. So what I did is I taped this down onto the linen and I just traced the horse 
Okay, just a little trick if you ever run into something like this. I traced just the horse down onto the linen. Then I drew a line across the top here, on the, right onto the canvas, and um, also drew a line on the side here so I know where I had to place. And then I loosened the tape and I just slightly moved it over this way. I'm exaggerating, of course, but I moved it over just slightly this way, retaped it down, and then I traced the rider. So what that ended up doing is had the effect of you know, getting the horse right, getting the rider right, but just pushing the rider back ever so slightly on the horse. Now what I had to do too is I also moved these shadows back too, so I didn't draw those shadows in until you know after I had done the shift. But that's just a nice little trick if you have everything pretty much correct, but you just need to move something slightly, you can just trace down parts of it, you know, unfasten it, slightly move it over, and then just retrace the other elements.